Hi everyone, it's Professor Primpton, and in this video we're going to talk about angle measure. So in this video we're going to talk about how to draw angles in standard position, how to convert between degrees and radians, how to find coterminal angles, how to find the length of a circular arc and the area of circular sector, and also to use linear and angular speed to describe motion of a circular path. So in this section we're going to discuss the measure of an angle in both degrees and radians, and then we're going to explore some of the applications involving length of a circular arc, area of a circular sector, and also linear and angular speed of an object that moves along a circle. So the definition of an angle. An angle AOB consists of two different rays, R sub 1 and R sub 2, with a common vertex at point O. In other words, both rays begin at the point O. The angle is interpreted as the rotation of ray R1 onto ray R2. So let's say you have the ray OA. This is what's called the initial side, or the ray R sub 1. And this initial side is going to rotate counterclockwise or clockwise onto a different ray, which is called R sub 2, and that's called the terminal side, which is the ray OB. And so you have the angle BOA, or angle AOB, for the initial side to rotate into the terminal side. So this is if the angle is rotated counterclockwise. And now if you have the initial side rotated clockwise, the same thing, you have the ray OA, which is the ray R sub 1, that's the initial side, and you rotate it clockwise, you end up at this different ray, R sub 2, which consists of the ray OB. So you have angle AOB formed. The difference between these two is if you have a rotation that's counterclockwise, that's considered a positive rotation. But if you actually have a clockwise rotation, that's considered a negative rotation. So again, the ray R sub 1 is called the initial side. It's rotated counterclockwise onto the ray R sub 2, which is called the terminal side. And if it's rotated counterclockwise, the angle is positive. However, if you have the ray R sub 1, that's your initial side, is rotated clockwise onto the ray R sub 2, which is the terminal side, then the angle is considered negative. So let's talk about angle measure. How do you actually measure an angle? Well, the measure of an angle is the amount of rotation about the vertex required to move the initial side, r sub 1, to the terminal side, r sub 2. So the definition of degree. One unit of measurement for angles is the degree, which is more commonly used with application problems in trigonometry, which is defined as the angle where the initial side is rotated counterclockwise 1 divided by 360 of the complete revolution to the terminal side. However, the more commonly used measurement for angles is what's called radians, which is more commonly used in calculus and other branches of mathematics. So the definition of radian measure, if a circle of radius 1 is drawn with a vertex of an angle at its center, then the measure of this angle in radians, which is abbreviated RAD, is the length of the arc that subtends the angle. So what that means is if you have a circle of radius r, if the initial side is rotated one radian in measurement for that angle, then the distance that actually has traveled along the circle is also the radius, which is r. So the distance of an arc on the circle is the same as the radius of the circle that's forming the angle between the initial side and the terminal side. That is what's called one radian of measurement for the angle. And so one radian is equal to 180 divided by pi degrees. Or if you round 180 divided by pi, you come up with 57.296 degrees if you round to three decimal places. So one radian of measurement with an angle is equivalent to 57.296 degrees, roughly. So notice that the circumference of a circle, when you have a circle of radius 1, the circumference is 2 pi, because the formula for circumference is pi times diameter, or 2 times pi times radius. Well, if the radius is 1, the circumference will be 2 pi. So one complete revolution is 2 pi radians. Or, if you convert that to degrees, one revolution of the unit circle counterclockwise would be 360 degrees. This gives the relationship that 360 degrees is actually equivalent to 2 pi radians. And we can now relate other special types of angles known in terms of degrees now to also be considered in radians. A straight angle has a measurement of 180 degrees. Or if you convert to radians, 180 degrees is also equal to pi radians. If you have a right angle, we know that a right angle has 90 degree measurement. Well, 90 degrees when you convert to radians would be pi divided by 2 radians. Let's say you have one radian, which is about 57.296 degrees. If you have a radius of 1 circle and you trace along this circle a distance of 1, that angle where it's forming the terminal side is 1 radian of measurement for this angle, which is about 57.296 degrees. However, if you have one half turn, a half of a revolution of the circle, you have what's called pi radians, or is equivalent to 180 degrees, because it's a half turn or half rotation of the circle, counterclockwise. So if you have a quarter of a revolution of a circle, 
that would just be 90 degrees, or pi divided by 2 radians. And if you have an angle that is 2 radians, in other words, if you take the radius of the circle, which is 1, and you extend 2 radii length, that's what's called 2 radians of measurement for that angle formed between the initial side and the terminal side. And 2 radians is about 114.592 degrees. Therefore, we get the following simple relationship between these two different methods of angle measurement to convert between degrees and radians. So the theorem, the relationship between degrees and radians, if you want to convert between degrees and radians, you need to know one of the relationships that we just talked about. You can use 180 degrees is equal to pi radians, or you can have one radian is equal to 180 divided by pi degrees, or one degree is equal to pi divided by 180 radians. Any of these three are equivalent. So number one, you can convert degrees to radians by multiplying your degree measurement by pi divided by 180, and that will convert it to radians. Number two, if you want to convert from radians to degrees, you can multiply your angle measurement that's in radians by 180 divided by pi, and that will convert it to degrees. So let's look at example one, converting between radians and degrees. Convert each angle in degrees to radians or from radians to degrees. So number one, 135 degrees. If you want to convert from degrees to radians, you need to multiply the angle measurement, which is in degrees, by pi divided by 180. So if you take 135 degrees, multiply by pi radians divided by 180 degrees, notice that the degree measurement will cancel out if you're using unit conversions. You'll have 135 pi divided by 180, and now it's in radians. So notice that you can simplify 135 divided by 180. It's actually equal to 3 pi divided by 4 radians. Number two, let's say you want to convert from negative 210 degrees to radians. Well, you have a negative angle measurement, so your angle measurement in radians will also be negative. So negative 210 degrees, you multiply by pi radians divided by 180 degrees, and you get negative 210 pi divided by 180, and now it's in radians. And now negative 210 divided by 180 will simplify. It'll be it'll be 7 sixths. So you have 7 pi divided by 6 radians. That's equivalent to negative 210 degrees. Number three, you want to convert from negative 2 pi over 3 radians to degrees. Well, you take negative 2 pi over 3, you take that and multiply by 180 degrees divided by pi. Notice that the pi's will cancel out, so that's an indication that you actually are converting to degrees. So you have negative 2 pi over 3 times 180 degrees over pi. So this simplifies to negative 360 degrees divided by 3, or that's negative 120 degrees. So negative 2 pi divided by 3 radians is equivalent to negative 120 degrees. And then number four, let's say you have 7 pi divided by 6 radians, and you want to convert to degrees. You multiply 7 pi divided by 6 by 180 degrees divided by pi, because we know 180 degrees and pi are equivalent to one another. Notice that you have pi will cancel out in the numerator and denominator. And so now you have 7 times 180, that's 1260 degrees. And then in the denominator, you'll have 6. So 1260 degrees divided by 6 will simplify to 210 degrees. So 7 pi divided by 6 is equivalent to 210 degrees. So now that we know how to convert between degrees and radians, let's talk about angles that are in standard position. An angle that's in standard position is if it's drawn in the xy plane where the vertex is the origin and its initial side is on the positive x-axis. So if we place the initial side on the x-axis and we have the vertex at the origin of our xy plane, so this angle is in what's called standard position. Notice if you rotate the initial side to this terminal side, it forms an angle. This angle is denoted with a Greek letter theta to represent the angle. And since the terminal side is in quadrant 2, we say that theta is in quadrant 2. And so this angle, theta, is actually in standard position. And we rotated the initial side counterclockwise to get to the terminal side. So theta is actually a positive angle. On the other hand, if you have the initial side on the x-axis and the vertex is at the origin, but you rotate the initial side clockwise, to get to the terminal side, then the theta will actually be in standard position, but theta will now be a negative angle because we rotate it clockwise instead of counterclockwise. And notice that the terminal side is in quadrant three, so we say that theta, the angle that's formed between the initial side and the terminal side, is in quadrant three. So we say that the quadrant that the angle lies in is the same as the quadrant that contains the terminal side. In addition, two angles that are in standard position are coterminal if their initial and terminal sides coincide or in other words, they're the same. So this figure that you have on the left is actually where you have a terminal side that's in quadrant one. So theta is in quadrant one, and again, it looks like you have rotated the initial side counterclockwise to get to the terminal side, so theta is a positive angle. The next figure, it looks like the initial side has been rotated clockwise, and it looks like you have a terminal side that's in quadrant two. So theta is in quadrant two, and theta is a negative angle because the rotation was clockwise rather than counterclockwise. The third figure, it looks like the theta is actually a positive angle because it's been rotated more than one revolution counterclockwise, and it ends up in quadrant one. 
So theta is in quadrant 1 and theta is a positive angle. In the last figure, it looks like the angle is positive because the rotation are counterclockwise. You will end up as a terminal side in quadrant 3, so theta is in quadrant 3 and theta is a positive angle. So example 2, we're going to talk about coterminal angles. Find coterminal angles with the given angle in standard position. So number 1, theta is 30 degrees. So coterminal angles are formed where you have the terminal side are the same for two different angle measurements. If you have an angle that's 30 degrees, if you rotate one entire turn counterclockwise or clockwise, that would be an addition of 360 degrees or subtraction of 360 degrees. These will give you coterminal angles because the terminal side will end up at the same place. So theta is equal to 30 degrees. If you take 30 degrees and add 360, you have 390 degrees. 390 degrees and 30 degrees are coterminal angles of one another. And again, if you take 30 degrees and you add two revolutions, you actually have 30 degrees plus 720 degrees. That'd be 750 degrees. 750 degrees and 30 degrees are also coterminal because the terminal side will be in the same position. So that's if you want to add 360 degrees or add 720 degrees or so on. That would be a counterclockwise rotation or revolution. Let's say you go clockwise instead, one complete turn. That would be 30 degrees subtract 360 degrees or negative 330 degrees. So negative 330 and 30 degrees have the same terminal side, so these are two coterminal angles. And for the same reason, if you take 30 degrees and subtract two revolutions clockwise, you subtract 720 degrees. So that would be 30 degrees, subtract 720 degrees, that's negative 690 degrees. Negative 690 degrees and 30 degrees are also coterminal angles. Number two, let's say the angle is negative 120 degrees. For the same reason, you can add one revolution counterclockwise, and you can take negative 120 degrees and add 360 degrees, and you'll end up with a coterminal angle, which is 240 degrees for the angle theta. Or you can take negative 120 degrees and add two revolutions counterclockwise, which will be 720 degrees, which would be negative 120 degrees plus 720 degrees, and that gives you positive 600 degrees. That would be the same coterminal angle as negative 120 degrees. Or you can actually have negative 120 degrees subtract 360 degrees, which would be clockwise rotation of one revolution, which will give you negative 480 degrees. So negative 480 degrees and negative 120 degrees are coterminal angles. And for the same reason, negative 120 degrees subtract two revolutions clockwise would be subtract 720 degrees. So that would give you an angle of negative 840 degrees, which is coterminal to negative 120 degree angle. So the last two angles were in terms of degree measurements. Let's talk about number three. This is actually in radians. You have theta that is negative pi divided by four radians. So you want to find a coterminal angle. You can add one revolution, which would be two pi radians if you go counterclockwise. So negative pi over four, if you add two pi, that would be adding eight pi divided by four, which will give you seven pi divided by four. Seven pi divided by four radians and negative pi over four radians, these are coterminal angles of one another because the terminal side are the same. Or you can take negative pi over four and add two revolutions counterclockwise, which will be negative pi over four plus four pi, which would be adding 16 pi over four to negative pi over four, which will give you 15 pi over four. So 15 pi over four and negative pi over four are coterminal angles. Also, if theta is negative pi over four and you go clockwise one revolution, you would have subtract two pi from negative pi over four. Well, that will give you negative nine pi over four. So that's coterminal to negative pi over four. And for the same reason, if you go clockwise two revolutions, that will be subtracting four pi from negative pi over four. That will give you negative 17 pi over four which is coterminal also to negative pi over four. So there's a way to actually write all the coterminal angles if it's in terms of radians. Notice that all the angles theta, theta is negative pi over four plus some number of rotations, either clockwise or counterclockwise, you're adding some multiple of two pi or you're subtracting some multiple of two pi from negative pi over four and you'll end up with a coterminal angle. So theta is negative pi over four plus two k pi where k is just some integer. Number four, let's say the angle is theta Five pi over six radians. So if theta is five pi over six, you can add one revolution counterclockwise. So you can add two pi and you'll end up with a coterminal angle of 17 pi over six because two pi is 12 pi divided by six. So plus five pi over six will give you 17 pi over six. Or you can take five pi over six and add two revolutions counterclockwise. That would be adding four pi to five pi over six. So four pi can be rewritten as 24 pi divided by six plus five pi over six will give you 29 pi over six. That would be also a coterminal angle with five pi over six angle. Or you can subtract two pi or subtract four pi and so on if you go clockwise revolutions. So if theta is five pi over six, subtract two pi will give you negative seven pi over six. Or if you take five pi over six and subtract four pi, you end up at negative 19 pi divided by six. 
So all the coterminal angles for 5 pi over 6 will be able to form theta equals 5 pi over 6 plus some multiple of 2 pi. You can either be adding a multiple of 2 pi or you could be subtracting a multiple of 2 pi. These are all coterminal angles with 5 pi over 6, where k is an integer. Example 3, coterminal angles. Find an angle with measurements between 0 degrees and 360 degrees that is coterminal with the angle of measure 1290 degrees in standard position. Well, notice that 1290 degrees is more than one revolution, which means that you can subtract 360 degrees and you'll end up at the same terminal angle. So if you take 1290 and subtract 360 degrees, that'll be subtracting one revolution counterclockwise that would end up at 930 degrees. Well, this is still more than one revolution. So again, you can subtract 360 degrees to get a coterminal angle, which will be 570 degrees. So again, 570 degrees is more than one revolution counterclockwise. So you can subtract 360 degrees again. So 570, subtract 360 you end up at 210. Now this is less than 360 degrees, so it's not quite one revolution. 210 degrees is an angle that is coterminal to 1290 degrees. So it looks like you can take 1290 degrees and subtract three revolutions, which are 360 degrees, and you'll end up at 210 degrees, which means that theta is in quadrant three when it's written in standard position. Now let's talk about length of a circular arc. An angle who has radian measure theta that is subtended to a circular arc has a length given by the following formula. And notice that the angle must be in radians to actually use this formula. So the definition of length of a circular arc. If a circle has radius r, the length s of the arc that subtends a central angle theta in radians, which is given as this formula, the arc length is the radius times the angle, which is theta in radians. So example four, arc length and angle measurement. Use the formula for length of a circular arc to determine the arc length measure to determine the arc length measure of the central angle or radius of the circle. So number one, find the length of the arc of a circle of radius 10 meters subtended by a central angle of 30 degrees. So first, notice that the angle is in degrees. We need to convert this to an equivalent radian measurement. Well, 30 degrees, if you multiply by pi divided by 180, you'll convert to radians which will give you pi divided by 6 radians. That's the equivalent to 30 degrees. So theta will be pi over 6 radians. And notice that the radius of the circle is also given to us as 10 meters. Well, that's enough to find out the arc length that's subtended by the central angle of pi over 6 radians. The arc length, S, is equal to the radius times the angle theta, the central angle theta, which is the arc length is 10 meters times pi over 6 radians, which will give you 10 pi divided by 6, which is approximately 5.236 if you round to three decimal places, meters. That's the length of the arc that's subtended by the angle of pi over 6 radians when the radius is 10 meters. Number two, a central angle theta in a circle with radius 4 meters is subtended by an arc of length 6 meters. Find the measurement of angle theta in radians and also degrees. So the arc length formula is arc length is equal to radius times the central angle theta. Notice that the arc length is given to us as 6 meters and the radius of the circle is given to us as 4 meters. So we can make those replacements. So we'll have six meters is equal to, the radius was four meters, and is equal to theta radians, because it's actually part of the formula, theta is in radians. And so if you solve for theta, you actually find out that theta is equal to six fourths, or three divided by two radians, or 1.5 radians. Now, if you want to convert this to an equivalent measurement in terms of degrees, you have to take three over two radians and multiply by 180 divided by pi to convert it to degrees, which will give you 85.94 degrees. So the central angle theta must be 1.5 radians or 3 halves radians or 85.94 degrees. So now let's talk about another application involving measurement of an angle. Let's talk about the area of a circular sector. The area of a circle of radius r is equal to a equals pi r squared or pi times radius squared. The sector of this circle with central angle theta has an area that is the fraction of the area of the entire circle. So the definition of area of a circular sector, if the circle has radius r, the area A of the sector of central angle theta, which is in radians, is A equals one half times radius squared times the angle theta, which is in radians. Example five, area of a sector. Find the area of a sector of a circle with radius two feet formed by a central angle of 30 degrees and round your answer to two decimal places. So again, notice that the angle is in degrees, 30 degrees, so we need to convert this to an equivalent angle measurement in radians. Well, we've done this before. Theta is equal to 30 degrees. Well, you multiply by pi divided by 180, and that will convert it to pi over 6 radians. That's the angle measurement for the angle theta. 
and the radius of the circle is 2 feet. So now we can find out the area of the circular sector using the formula. Area is equal to 1 half times the radius squared times the angle theta, which is in radians. So A is equal to 1 half R squared theta. The R is 2 feet, so it will be 1 half times 2 feet squared times the angle theta is pi over 6 radians. And if you simplify this answer, you'll have pi divided by 3, which will be in feet squared because we're talking about area. So this is approximately 1.04 square feet for the area of the circular sector of radius 2 feet and the central angle is 30 degrees or pi over 6 radians. So let's finish up this video by talking about circular motion. Suppose that you have a point that moves along a circle. There are two different ways to describe the motion of the point, which are called linear speed and angular speed, which is illustrated in the following figure. So let's say you have a circle of radius r, and you have this angle theta that's formed a central angle, and you have this s, which is the arc length of this arc. The distance that the object travels with radius r along the circle with angle theta, that was actually the arc length formula, which is s equals r times theta, where theta must be in radians. Well, if you talk about linear speed, that is distance divided by time. Well, the distance was the arc length, which is s. Time will be represented with t, and so the arc length is r times theta divided by t. That's what's called linear speed. On the other hand, if you want to find out what is the angular speed, then you take the angle and divide by time. The linear speed is the rate at which the distance traveled is changing. In other words, the linear speed is the distance traveled divided by the time elapsed. So it's distance s, which is the arc length, divided by time t. The angular speed is the rate at which the central angle theta is changing. So the angular speed is the number of radians the angle changes divided by the time elapsed. So you take the angle theta, which is in radians, and divide by time. So the definition of linear speed and angular speed. Suppose that a point moves along a circle of radius r, and the ray from the center of the circle to the point traverses theta radians in time t. Let s equal r times theta be the arc length, so that would be the distance the point travels in time t. Then the speed of the object is given by the following formulas. Angular speed is the angle theta in radians divided by the time elapsed, t. And the linear speed is the distance traveled over time t. So the distance was the arc length, s. So that is r times theta. And then you divide by time t. So example 6, finding the linear and angular speed. Suppose that a boy rotates a stone in a 3 feet long sling at a rate of 15 revolutions every 10 seconds. Find the angular speed and the linear velocity, or speed, of the stone. So let's do linear speed first. Linear velocity, or linear speed, is the arc length, s, or r times theta, divided by time, t. So we have the radius, it was 3 feet. We have the time, which was 10 seconds. And we also have theta, which was 15 revolutions of the stone in the sling. Or we know the revolution is 2 pi radians. So that'd be 15 times 2 pi, or 30 pi radians is the angle that the stone has traveled in 10 seconds. So the linear speed would be r times theta, or 3 feet times 15 revolutions, which would be 3 feet times 30 pi radians, divided by 10 seconds. And if you simplify this, it'll be 90 pi divided by 10, or 9 pi. And this is feet per second. So the linear speed is 9 pi feet per second for the stone. And now the angular speed. The angular speed is theta, which is in radians, divided by time t. Well, theta we knew was 30 pi because 30 pi radians was 15 revolutions of the stone in the sling. So you have 30 pi radians divided by 10 seconds, and you find out that the angular speed is 3 pi radians per second. So this finishes our video on angle measure. We talked about how to draw angles in standard position, how to convert between degrees and radians, how to find coterminal angles, how to find the length of a circular arc, and also the area of a circular sector. And then we also talk about linear and angular speed to describe the motion of a circular path. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about trigonometry of right triangles.